solving quadratic equations. So, meron tayong iba't ibang types ng quadratic equation. And unlike linear equation, um, yung quadratic equation medyo mas challenging siyang isolve. Kasi um, meron, tatlong, meron tayong tatlong methods na pwedeng gamitin to solve a quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Pwede tayong gumamit ng factoring, pwede tayong gumamit ng quadratic formula, or pwede tayong gumamit ng completing the square. Now, for uh, lesson today, magpo-focus ako sa completing the square. Pero bago tayo makapunta sa completing the square, marami pa tayong steps na pupuntahan para maintindihan yung mabuti kung paano ba gamitin yung completing the square method. Now, yung mga quadratic equation na nakita nyo in the past, meron tayong ax squared plus bx, wherein yung constant, wala. Pwede din namang meron tayong ax squared plus c, wherein yung middle term naman yung wala. Or meron tayong ax squared plus bx plus c, wherein yung tatlong trinomials eh, present dun sa quadratic equation. So, example ng first um, problem, pwede tayo magkaroon ng 2x squared plus x equal to 0. Or pwede rin tayo makapag-solve ng 3x squared minus 9 equal to 0. And x squared plus 5x plus 4 equal to 0. Lahat sila quadratic equation kahit iba't iba yung itsura nila. So, yung factoring method, merong madali, merong mahirap. Yung easy method is when yung quadratic equation yun na factorable, eh yung leading coefficient niya is 1. Now, paano siya magiging difficult? Kapag yung leading coefficient mo, hindi na 1. Kung meron na siyang 2, 3, 4, or 5, then yung factoring method may be a little bit more challenging. Now, kung ayaw nyo naman gumamit ng factoring, especially kung merong leading coefficient, you can you always use the quadratic formula. Kasi yung quadratic formula laging gumagana yan. Kahit anong quadratic equation yung isolve nyo, kahit ito, 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 or something like this, mas kukuha nyo pa rin yung sagot nyo using the quadratic formula. Kaya, powerful yung quadratic formula kahit medyo mahaba yung i-memorize yung formula para mas solve, solve yung x. So, there's no way out. Kailangan memorize nyo yung quadratic formula to solve the values, value of x in a quadratic equation, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac all over 2a. And lastly, yung completing the square method. Now, ano ba yung zero product property? Yung zero product property, um, it's by definition, is if a times b is equal to zero, then either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. So, kailan natin ginagamit yung zero product property? So, madalas natin gamitin yan sa, let's say, second or third step ng uh, solving quadratic equation. So, example one, we have x times x plus 3 equal to zero. So, ito pwede na natin siyang gamitan ng zero product property kasi meron na tayong dalawang factors, yung x at yung x plus 3. So, you split this 2 and you'll have x equal to 0 at yung isa, x plus 3 equal to 0. So, you'll equate both of them to 0 para makuha mo yung parehas na value ng x. So, yung isang term, simple lang, x is equal to 0. Pero yung pangalawang term, x plus 3 equal to 0, subtract mo yung 3, is equal to 3. So, notice, every time meron kayong uh, problem sa quadratic equation, lagi kayong may dalawang sagot. So, ito yon. At yung example number 2 naman, x squared plus 2x equal to 0. So, dito, hindi mo agad-agad nakukuha or magagamit yung zero product property. You need another step, which is yung GCF. So, take the GCF of this quadratic equation, pull it out. So, parang reverse ng uh, distributive property. So, x yung sa labas kasi x can divide x squared and 2x. And then, pag dinivide mo siya, yung parenthesis mo magiging x plus 2 na lang. And you know that you did it correctly kasi kapag ka dinistribute mo siya pabalik, x squared plus 2x pa rin yung sagot. At ngayon, kung ganyan na yung forma niya, pwede mo nang gamitan ng zero product property. So, meron kang dalawang factors, yung x at saka x plus 2. So, yung x mo is equal to 0, at yung isa naman, x plus 2 is equal to 0. Solving for x, x is equal to negative 2. Another way of using the zero proper product property is kung yung factors nyo ay dalawang binomial. Kasi ito, monomial at saka binomial. Ito naman, parehas na binomial. So, split mo siya into 2, Meron kang x minus 5 is equal to 0. And meron kang 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. And you solve for x. You'll have x is equal to 5 here. Meron ka naman dito. Medyo dalawang steps ang kailangan mo dito to solve for x. You add 1 on both sides. And then divide 2 on both sides to get x is equal to 1 half. Tulad nung uh, 
first set, minsan hindi mo agad-agad magagamit yung zero product property. Kasi, kailangan mo pa ng isa pang step. At dito, yung step mo is yung factoring method. Kasi yung x squared minus x plus 12, pwede mo siyang i-factor into x plus 3 and x minus 4. Zero product property, x plus 3 is equal to 0 and x minus 4 is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to 4. So, ito yung zero product property na gagamitin natin o ginagamit natin pag nagsasolve ng quadratic equation. At syempre, yung quadratic formula. Maraming estudyante na ayaw gamitin yung quadratic formula kasi mahaba yung, mahaba yung formula, maraming steps, maraming process. Pero, once nakasanayan nyo na to, madaling gamitin yung quadratic formula. At isa pa, kung ayaw nyo mag-factor or ayaw nyo mag-completing the square, ito lagi pwedeng gaga ma magagamit nyo ito palagi para makuha yung sagot. So, quadratic formula is given by negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So, let's say meron tayong quadratic equation. We have 2x squared minus 3x minus 1. And in this case, set nyo muna yung function nyo, a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 3, and c is equal to negative 1. So, always do this step para mas madali yung pag-substitute. Sulat nyo yung formula para to prepare you for answering the problem, and then substitute nyo lang yung mga numbers. So, negative 3, or plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4, a, which is 2, c, which is negative 1, all over 2a. So, 2 times 2. And then, pagka na-set up nyo na siya, Carefully, just um, simplify and evaluate the function. So, una ito, kasi dalawa yung negative, magiging positive. And then, negative 3 squared naman, as you know, is negative 3 times negative 3, which is equal to 9. And then, ito lagi yung ginagawa ko. Kapag alam ko meron dalawang negatives dito sa parenthesis ko, automatically, alam kong addition yan. So, meron na ako ngayon, 4 times 2 which is 8, and I know that it's positive kasi dalawa yung negative ko. Para lang hindi ako malito, kasi minsan nagiging, naiiwan ko siyang minus, minsan hindi ko naiisip na meron palang negative dito. So be careful with this process, kasi ito yung laging, um, dito laging nagkakamali ang maraming bata. So we have 9 plus 8, simplify it further, we have 17, 3 plus or minus, square root of 17 all over 4, now, sa puntong to, medyo uh, wala ka nang magagawa unless meron kang calculator. So, pwede mo na siyang split into two. So, medyo weird yung sagot, pero ganun talaga yung quadratic formula kasi nga hindi siya factorable. So, hindi siya yung perfect uh, square minsan. So, kaya minsan yung sagot nyo, eh, meron fraction at meron pang radical. So, dito, pag in-split mo siya into two, meron kang x equals 3 plus square root of 17 over 4, and meron kang x equals 3 minus square root of 17 all over 4. So, yan yung difference nung dalawa. Okay. Yan. Papunta sa completing the square. So, bago tayo um, natin gamitin yung uh, pangatlong method ng pagsagot ng quadratic formula, kailangan alam nyo yung perfect square trinomial. At kailangan alam nyo rin kung paano mag-create or paano mag-produce ng perfect square trinomial. So, ito yung mga examples ng perfect square trinomial. Now, bakit siya tinawag ng perfect square trinomial? Now, ito yung mga examples ng perfect square trinomial. We have x squared plus 6x plus 9, x squared minus 10x plus 25, x squared plus 12x plus 36. Ang tanong, bakit siya tinawag na perfect square trinomial? Simply lang. Kasi, kapag pinactor mo to, two numbers na pag minultiply mo will be equal to 9, but when you add them up will be equal to 6, will simply be 3 and 3. So, pag kinuha mo yung factor niya, meron ka ngayong x plus 3, and x plus 3. That's why it's called the perfect square trinomial kasi parehas yung number tapos parehas pa ng sign. So, pag meron kang x squared minus 10x plus 25, perfect square trinomial din siya kasi ang factor nitong quadratic equation na to would be x minus 5 at x minus 5. At yung pangatlo will be x plus 6 and x plus 6. 
So, mapapansin nyo, pare-pareha sila ng number, pare-pareha sila ng sign. Kaya siya tinawag na perfect square trinomial. At kailangan nyo to, kasi mamaya, sa completing the square method, mas maiintindihan nyo yung um, process niya kapag alam nyo yung perfect square trinomial. Dito rin nang galing yung um, term na perfect or completing the square. So, ito yung kinukomplete natin dun sa process na yun. Now, paano tayo magkakreate ng perfect square trinomial or PST? So, let's say meron kang x squared plus 20x plus a number or x squared minus 12x plus a number, or x squared plus 5x plus a number. Paano tayo makakapag-produce ng perfect square trinomial para ma-fill out yung last term? Ito yung formula niya. So, dependent yung last term mo dun sa middle term mo. So, to do that, all you have to do is take half of 20. So, isipin nyo, ano ba yung kalahati ng 20? So, lagi yung middle term. Ano yung kalahati ng 20? And then, isa square mo siya afterwards. So, dalawang steps. So, ang kalahati ng 20 is 10. And then, 10 squared is equal to 100. So, ibig sabihin, ang perfect square trinomial nito, para makompleto natin, just add it to, just add 100 to your equation para maging perfect square trinomial. At perfect square trinomial na siya kasi pagka pinactor mo siya, meron kang x plus 10 at x plus 10 which is the perfect square trinomial. So, ito yung process na kailangan mong gawin. So, yung susunod, negative 12x, so half of the middle term, which is 12, half of 12 is 6, and 6 times 6 is 36. So, yung last term mo will be 36 para maging perfect square trinomial. Now, yung number 3, medyo weird kasi odd number siya. Kasi pag, tinan, pag inisip mo, ano ba yung half ng 5? So, mga, ano yung fraction or decimals, which is true. So, half of 5, for me, is simply 5 over 2. So, sinusulat ko siya madalas into fraction. So, 5 over 2. Kasi 5 divided by 2, right? Or half of 5. And then, you have to square it again. So, it's 25 all over 4. So, ito yung number mo, or ito yung na missing na um, last term mo to complete your perfect square trinomial. So, this time, 25 over 4, yung number natin to complete our perfect square trinomial. So, mapapansin nyo kapag uh, even yung middle term, whole number yung um, last term nyo. At pag odd naman yung middle term, magkakaroon ka ng fraction or decimals pag nag-complete or nag-create ka ng perfect square trinomial. So again, <clears throat> isa to sa mga steps ng computing the square method na kailangan yung malaman.